I left the wide expanse of the River Trent and moored up in the basin just below Trent Lock. I noted as I climbed the steps up to the lock that I'd need my water conservation key. It's also known as a handcuff key and is used to release the lock paddles so vandals can't drain the canal of its precious water. The Erewash Canal was built towards the end of the 18th century and is 11 and 3 quarter miles in length. It has a total of 15 locks and is suitable for boats up to 72 foot in length and 10 foot 6 inches in width. The canal travels north through the popular Long Eaton area to Sandy Acre where I was to moor up for the night. The northernmost section of the canal continues after Ilkeston. It's rural and has attractive surroundings. As the canal curves round between the towns of Eastwood and Hena, it terminates at the Great Northern Basin at Langley Mill. Right above Trent Lock are a small gathering of boatyards and a Canal and River Trust sanitary and water point. Make sure you fill up with water at Lock 1 because there isn't another water tap right until Langley Mill which is right at the very end. So I'm full up. The day has actually turned out to be quite nice, nice and sunny, it's a bit warm. And um, I've been warned that certain patches of the canal are quite shallow, some have got lots of weeds, but we'll see how we go. As you travel north, the canal's offside is lined with well-kept houseboats of all different sizes and shapes. I think this journey is going to take a bit of time today. Because I always try and go at tick over speed when going past people. Again, there's nothing worse than boats zooming past and everything falling out and around you inside the boat. So I'm going nice and slow, but there are boats moored along the side as far as the eye can see. Through Long Eaton, its historical past is clear to see. Lace making and railway wagon manufacturing dominated the town's population, and both used the large railway yard just north of the town. The canal straightens out here, and lots of mooring points available on the town side of the cut. I've had a couple of people look quite shocked when I've gone past. I'm like, well, what's wrong with the boat? Is there is there things sticking out or something? And then one person said, blimey, I've seen two boats in one day. So I think the Erewash Canal is a, a, a bit of a quiet canal. Um, someone even came to the end of their garden just to watch me go past and said that they hadn't seen another boat all day. Um, now when I came through the, the lock at Trent Lock, there was one boat there, but to be fair, I haven't seen any more boats. The Long Eaton Lock sits alongside a huge expanse of playing fields called West Park. A number of murals have been painted on many of the park's otherwise plain brick walls. This one showcasing the canal alongside. At Sandy Acre Lock, just north of Long Eaton, there are the only surviving lockside cottages left on the canal. The Erewash Canal, Preservation and Development Association have leased the cottages from the Canal and River Trust. The cottages are maintained by volunteers with the aim to keep them as historically accurate as possible. There's a link to their website in the description below. Next to the cottages is where the Erewash and the Derby Canal once joined. The Derby and Sandy Acre Trust are trying to raise funds to restore the former canal. If restored, it would create a cruising ring and reconnect the city of Derby to the National Canal Network. A link to the Trust's website is also in the description below. As there's limited metal shuttering to the side of the canal's edge, when in built-up areas I try to moor up on bollards rather than using mooring pins. Just north of Long Eaton is the small town of Sandy Acre, where there's a cluster of shops and facilities. 
This is Sandy Acre. I moored up here last night. A couple of mooring spots. Um, enough for probably about three boats, I'd say. Um, I saw one boat moving all day yesterday. Very, very quiet canal. Um, some of the people on Twitter had mentioned that they couldn't get up the canal because of weeds. But I think, I think that was um, different because a couple of weeks ago there was quite a big festival right at the top of the Erewash Canal for the Inland Waterways Association. So I think they might have either dredged the canal, cleared it with weeds, or the sheer volume of, of boats, a um, hundred plus boats, um, cleared it you know, for us. So um, a bit of a noisy night. Um, quite a lot of traffic, quite a lot of people yelling and screaming, sirens, that sort of thing. So I'm a little bit tired today, but um, I'm up nice and early and onward I go. So that was a bit of an interesting conversation I just had. Someone at the end of their um, house, just down the cut here, um, end of their garden, they've got a, a cruiser, and as I was going past, they asked, oh, you've got a hole in the front of your hull. Like, really concerned. And I was like, oh my goodness, what's happened? Have I bashed into something? And then he sort of pointed where it was. Obviously, I'm steering, so I couldn't stop and look. And he described what it was. Like, it's like a hoop. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> for you. That's actually the um, vent for the gas locker. So it's built into the frame, so nothing to worry about. But it gave me a couple of, um, couple of seconds of panic then. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna sink right out into the countryside north of um, San Diego, but no, it's fine. It's built into the hull. <laughs> I can see this is going to be a little bit of a troublesome lock because the top gates keep swinging open in the wind. So in this instance, I'm going to try and close them as much as I can and then start releasing the water from the bottom gates ever so slightly, which will um, cause a bit of a pull on the water and hopefully force the gates to close. Um, but I've closed both of them now. <laughs> And they've both blown open. As soon as I've got to the other side, the other one's blown open. So, look, this one's already on its way again. So that's the sort of things I really enjoy. I'm sat here waiting for a lock to fill up and someone walking his dog along the towpath, um, we cropped up a conversation and started talking about my solar panels. They will be in a much more detailed video later on when I get to uh, finalizing the electrics cupboard. So don't worry about that. I know people can see them on the roof and I've had lots of comments, so there is a video on its way. But it was nice being able to chat to him about voltage drop over distances of cabling and all that sort of stuff so he knew what he was talking about and those sorts of conversations don't really happen if you're walking along the towpath um, and someone else is walking along the towpath you might say morning or hello or hi dog and give it a pat but you wouldn't strike up a conversation and that's something I'm really noticing when you're on a boat everyone wants to stop and chat with me navigating locks on my own, I'm trying to make it a little bit easier for myself. On this lock, I've opened the ground puddle and the gate puddle, but only on one side. It reduces the risk factor because I don't have to walk across the gate to open the other side and then back again to close them. Um, and because I'm on my own, in the middle of nowhere, um, I could slip off and fall into the lock and no one would even know I was there for hours on end. So just being sensible I'm not in a rush although it is starting to rain now so I might more up soon um, and just take it easy through the locks and make it easy as possible it was hard work to turn every corner and be confronted with yet another lock but as rain showers passed overhead 
I carried on up to the east of Ilkeston, where I decided enough was enough and stopped for the day. I had already moored up for the night. It was chucking it down with rain, I was all wet and damp. Um, so I moored up and everything was fine. I had a nice cup of tea, everything's dried off. And then I started looking out the window and I thought, well, this is an absolutely glorious evening. It'd be such a shame to not use the, the lovely weather to um, navigate a bit more of the canal. Where I was, there was a bit of a hum from a, a building, like a sound hum, which was a little bit annoying. It was, there, it was obviously some, a workshop or something that was nearby. And also, every time I moved, the television signal ever so slightly went out. And every time I moved in the boat because the, there were trees in the way. So I thought, well, nice evening. Let's keep going. At one point, I thought to myself, am I cruising through the Florida Everglades? Just a couple of weeds. This evening's turned out to be really nice. Nice low setting sun, nice and quiet. I don't think there'll be any rain anymore, so I should have um, a nice quiet night. warm sun was beautiful but I let it get the better of me as I travelled a little too long in the day and it very quickly became dark and then I ran into trouble. It's bright and early on what day three of my journey up the Erewash Canal. Um, I did this part of the canal last night um, and I moored up, I wanted to moor up on a nice straight bit um, I knew that I would have to use mooring pins. It was getting dark, I was really damp after a day's raining and I moored up. Could I get the pins in? Oh gosh, because the, the path here is so well made, I just couldn't get them in. There were stones, there was rubble, there was great big boulders. So I had to give up because the light was fading fast and I had to reverse all the way down this bit and moor up on an end bay of what was, going, what was a lock landing. Um, that's not advisable, but considering I saw two boats yesterday and I've seen nothing yet today and one boat the day before, I thought, well, I'll chance it. There's hardly going to be any traffic. And the lock is in exactly the same place and, and gates are in the same position as they were last night so I know no one's come down so I thought I'd get up nice and early this morning and keep going. I'm going to go up to Eastwood which is a Langley Mill lock. There's facilities up there. Um, I'll, I'll have a look around see what's available and then I'll turn around and aim to go down the complete error wash right the way back to Trent lock today hopefully. Um, my calculations are it'll take around about six or seven hours so it's a long day and hopefully because there's no traffic um, a load of the locks will be in my favour because I left them in that way yesterday so we'll see. Some of the bridges on the air wash are quite low Bridge 27 up near um, Eastwood is exceedingly low, so I had to take it really slow just to make sure that it didn't knock my solar panels off. I had completed all but one lock and wanted to get to the end of the canal and all the way back to the River Trent in one day without stopping. 
At the end of the Erewash Canal is the Great Northern Basin. Narrowboats line its edges and there's a boatyard here and a small area to turn around. There's supposed to be a water and sanitation point here, but all I could find is this small hut with what looked like an outside tarp. No signs indicating if I was correct, however. The basin is just to the west of Eastwood and there are plenty of large supermarkets and restaurants just a few minutes walk from the canal. So I've never done this before. I've watched other people do it, but I've never done it. I'm right at the very, very end of the Erewash Canal up at Langley Mill. There's one final lock there that was in my favour and then there's a turning circle in, in the basin. But it's early on a Sunday morning quite early and the last thing I wanted to do was lots of clanging of lock gates and ratchets and me motoring back and forth to turn around and I didn't really want to wake everyone up because I'm sure lots of people are having a nice lie in so this morning I've decided to um, tie some ropes together and pull Alice around and that's worked quite nicely I'm back in the right direction now so I'll undo this rope on the centre line and off I go. I won't have any propellers clogged up in weeds and I certainly won't have a bow thruster tube full of debris. So that's what worked quite well. I might do that again in the future. So that was the Erewash Canal, a very quiet canal that passes through both urban and picturesque countryside. I didn't have any problems with weeds and all the locks and bridges were in good working order. I was limited to where I could moor up overnight and on the edges of some of the urban areas the locals looked like they could cause a bit of bother. So two of the three nights I kept to the rural countryside where everyone was pleasant enough. It was hard work on my own but as the canal is so unused 13 of the 15 locks I needed to navigate back were still in my favour which was nice. Don't forget to click the thumbs up if you like this episode, and I love reading and replying to your comments. Until next time, see you later.